Hi everyone. My name is uh, Nimroti Kotzner, and I'm, uh, as, uh, as Itamar said, I'm from uh, Weir TV. Okay, so uh, Weir TV is a well-founded uh, well startup, uh, offices based on, uh, in New York, Tel Aviv, and Paris. Uh, till recently, the R&D uh, base w based was uh, in uh, Tel Aviv. Um, the company recently decided to uh, relocate the R&D center to New York. Um, a little bit on this, so I'm not no longer on Weir TV. Uh, me and a couple of uh, other members of the core R&D, uh, we've uh, started uh, on a new journey. We've created, uh, we started a small startup for consulting and uh, services in the domain of uh, uh, back uh, the domain are, the, the, the domains are uh, back end and big data and front end and devops also so it uh, it ended up that uh, we are tv is our first customer so i'm going to talk about a little bit of uh, how we use Redis in uh, Weird TV and how it fits our needs and architecture. So a little bit on Weird TV's project and domain. Um, Weird TV is all about uh, creating a new way of engagement between uh, commercial TV shows and their audience. So to simplify it, you can think of uh, shows like, I don't know, The Next, Star, Next Rising Star or The Big Brother, and the platform gives the ability uh, of a new engagement uh, with the, the audience. So the engagement is done in real time during the, the live show, okay? So if... Uh, if a broadcaster broadcast an interaction, so immediately all the audience who are, uh, whom are, who are viewing the show gets the interaction and can reply on it. So basically, the, uh, the users use an augmented reality application. But, you know, we are in Redis uh, Meetup, so it's all about the platform itself. So let's move on. So, I'm not, go <laughs> I'm not going, <laughs> it's a bit complex. I'm not going to, I'm not going to describe all of this. I'm doing, <laughs> that's a description, <laughs> all, the, all the schematics. But in very high level terms, users send their events to a WebSocket cluster, uh, which was uh, recently managed by Hazelcast, we use Vertex. Uh, anyone here uh, uses uh, uses Vertex? So uh, we use Vertex cluster for the web sockets uh, for web sockets, and uh, I, I've noticed that um, in other presentation um, they've talked about Hazelcast. So we have encountered the same problem, uh, which the Hazelcast event bus is not that reliable. So in the new architecture, uh, we replaced the Hazelcast event bus with the Kafka by replacing the uh, channels on the event bus with uh, Kafka topics. Okay, so the events are coming to the WebSocket, and then with a pipeline, uh, uh, within the pipe, they get to the Kafka, and from the Kafka, they are consumed by a cluster of storm nodes to be later uh, to be processed, and then uh, go to metrics and analytics in Redis, and uh, also changing uh, dynamically user profile within Couchbase, which is replicated by XDCR plugin to Elasticsearch. I know it's not uh, in the schematics, but it's an old one. Okay, 
So basically, this is the data flow. And now let's talk about how we use Redis. So in the ops point of view, um, we use Google Compute Engine for deploying our environments, both dev QA stage and production. I'm not going to talk about lots of numbers, but um, currently our cluster is consisted of three masters and six, six slaves running on separate nodes. Um, our DevOps is uh, doing uh, their uh, DRP uh, using um, a cron job, which runs uh, which runs once a day, and taking a dump. We do not use AOF. We've tried this. Um, I don't know if it's the right. Uh, uh, maybe maybe we do need to consider <laughs> uh, replacing it. Um, also, the rebalancing and the resharding is done by DevOps uh, manually using Redis Trib. So, what what do we actually do uh, with Redis? So, first of all, we keep our WebSocket session data uh, within Redis. So, for each WebSocket connection, we save a hash in the form in the following form. The hash actually uh, contains the unique device ID, and later on I will tell you why, uh, from our perspective, it's so important to uh, save the unique uh, device ID, and the time step of which the session was opened. So we do use Redis for security and session authentication. Um, we run our, uh, I didn't say it, but uh, we, uh, besides uh, WebSockets, our endpoints, we do have uh, RESTful web services. We use uh, Spring Boot, which runs on top of Undertow. And uh, we use Spring Security. And the filters, the security filters, uh, are validating the, the, uh, the, the, the connection. Uh, from a token which is saved in Redis. Also, the WebSocket uh, validates the, uh, is doing the authentication with uh, the same social token which is provided by us to the client. And the, th the, third, thing, the, third, uh, uh, the third thing that we do, and this is why I said that uh, keeping the unique ID, unique device, mobile device ID, is so important, because during the show, um, we allow only uh, one device per user to be uh, to open a session. So you can't be uh, you can't open a session from two different devices, and I'm sure uh, you all know why. We uh, we use Redis also for Vertex and Storm clusters recovery. When a Vertex node is joining into the cluster, it recovers uh, lots of data, which is, first of all, the most important ones are the events buffer. So if I'm a broadcaster and I want to publish an event for a specific audience, for a, spe uh, for a specific show for all the audience, then this uh, uh, this event needs to be uh, saved in order to to be later on recovered if a node fails or joining into the cluster. Uh, it is quite similar with storm nodes because we use storm for the processing, so we need each node to be aware of the current state of a specific show, like which episode, which interactions are currently running, and does those interaction have a specific data attached? Um, the important, the most important thing that we use is for real-time matrix for engagement. So one of the things that uh, we do after, uh, when we process the, the data, the events with, uh, with storms, 
we actually uh, generate counters for a, for a specific event with all the user's attributes. For example, uh, if I want to know the total numbers, total number of users who answered uh, answer one, for example, on a interaction on a specific interaction, and I want to I want all of them to be with a specific range of the age group, males, and who live in Paris, France. So for each event, we create all the permutations and actually raising counters for those, uh, for those answers provided by the users. We also save user ranking uh, scored by the answer time, of course, in order to create the leaderboards. So um, I'm, not, I'm not actually going to go deep on that section because, as you know, if I'm showing, if I'm watching uh, a television, uh, the same show, and I'm in Paris, and when you're uh, in Israel, it's not the same delay. It's not the, but we do use, uh, we do use, we use something called Civilution for the sync with the television. So we are able to keep the score by, uh, by answering time. That's it. <laughs>